I'm thrilled to be doing studio notes for the famous and fabulous Louise Fletcher's Art Tribe, which I've been a part of now for three years. My name is Suzanne Nicholl. I live in Worcestershire, which is in the centre of England. I'm originally from the west coast of Wales. You'll see from my paintings that most of my art is inspired by wild coastlines and furious weather. And when I can't get to the coast, I look for inspiration in the world around me, nature. Um, you don't usually go for the calm and serene, to be fair. I like a bit of disruption. In 2020, I painted my first proper painting. I'd done two little watercolours about so big um, on holiday and I was so disappointed in how they turned out and very frustrated. I never returned to painting. But after I finished my career in 2017 or something, I went off to art school in 2019. And we did jewellery making and we did textiles and sculpture. But in the January 2020, we started painting. And I painted a very uh, ordinary oil landscape, but I was thrilled with it. From there on in, as the world went mad into COVID and lockdown, I then discovered Louise's uh, free course. I went on to do the full course. I've stolen from sequential artists, soaked up YouTube, visited exhibitions, read dozens of books. I live and breathe and absolutely love and adore art and my art practice. You'll see that my art has changed quite considerably from that unexpressive landscape. I now do much more gestural, expressive work. I work in acrylics and in mixed media. I'm trying to get more into collage, although I find that a little bit scary. I don't know why. Um, and I recently, in the last year, have worked quite a lot, or mainly really, in oil and oil and cold wax, which I love. I've just done a solo exhibition in Cheltenham where I met the fabulous Tracy and uh, it was brilliant. I think coming into the art world, especially at my age, I was uh, 50 when I retired, I felt that I'd missed opportunities. I never went to art school, I never did art at school. I was always creative, but I didn't ever draw, never put much attention uh, to drawing, so I can't really do it very well. Um, and there's that, I think there's that temptation to feel like I wish I'd done this 20 years ago, but I am where I am. And I actually, coming to it as an older adult, I am dedicated to it and I've got transferable skills. Um, and also I care less. I'm willing to take a bit more of a risk. I'm willing to be a little bit braver. I really love when people love my work and when they buy it it's a thrill but I never ask people what they think about it maybe maybe two significant critical friends but other than that I never ask my hubby never ask my kids because frankly I don't really care I love doing it and I'm going to carry on doing it I wasn't going to wait for somebody to offer me a solo show I could be 90 or it could never happen so I did my own and I hired a gallery and I had a blast for a week. I was a pretend gallery owner. I looked at my paintings on the wall and I loved every second of it. And I met some amazing people as a result and lots of opportunities have come my way as well. So I'd highly recommend it. Be brave, take the step, pay the gallerist and sit behind the desk and talk about your paintings. I worked in the health service for 32 years as a physiotherapist and I hadn't realised how sheltered my life had been until I entered the world of art. I then discovered this amazing world of new language and new vision, new visual experiences. As a kid, I'd never gone to an art gallery and as an adult, I hadn't been to very many. I didn't understand modernism, I didn't particularly like cubism, didn't really understand Picasso, didn't particularly like him, but my eyes have been opened. I did that short formal course, did a year art and foundation, art foundation. Learning or being taught to open your eyes, open your mind has been absolutely revelationary to me. I now spend probably 50% of my time learning about art. So I have got a friend who's got every book under the sun, so I borrow those. I buy a load myself. 
uh, learning from other artists, whether they're past or present, whether it's on YouTube, in books, galleries, it has been eye-opening, you know, and they say steal like an artist. Well, I do. I take what I like and I leave the rest. So I would highly recommend really treating yourselves. It felt a little bit like um, I was a bit being a bit um, self-indulgent going off to these places, but this is my work. This is what I do. I'm an artist. So actually learning from others and seeing what other people are doing is absolutely crucial. I keep lots of notes. I keep way too many notebooks and then I can't find the notes that I've written. But just writing down what I love about people's work, taking photos, buying their, buying their cards, postcards, taking the pamphlets from exhibitions and putting them into sketchbooks has been uh, a fabulous way of reminding myself what I like and fine tuning my approach and style and process to art. I call them rabbit holes and we've all been down them I'm sure when you find a little thread about an artist or a piece of work and you start delving down into discovering more and more about that genre about that person it leads on to another one another one and a few hours have gone by and i just love that I just found philida varlo who i'd never heard of before who didn't really um get any acknowledgement for her wonderful 3d sculptures until she'd retired so there's hope for us all and what I've started doing recently is pulling my little notes together and putting them into a blog for my purpose, really. Um, so I can go back and, and um, remind myself, uh, keep them in a central place. So other artists are absolutely essential, I think, to our own growth um, and development, developing our own style, really. And giving us aspiration, giving us inspiration, but also giving us that aspiration for what we can achieve. I was fortunate enough to go in February to see the Monet and Mitchell exhibition in Paris and it was not that far short of life-changing. Seeing those enormous gestural expressive pieces that probably five years ago I wouldn't have really appreciated but learning more about the expression at uh, the abstract expressionists, learning more about Mitchell looking at uh, the comparisons and differences between Monet, a much more traditional artist, as I thought, uh, and Mitchell. It was just phenomenal. When you go and see these uh, exhibitions and you read about them, you start seeing that um, those influences come through in your work. So out of my uh, latest series of work i know the three pieces that are my most favorite and they're the ones where i really didn't care i didn't care what it turned out like i really painted like nobody was watching it was felt risky it felt like i could be ruining what was underneath and i've learned to just sit with that leave it leave the painting and come back in the next day and see or even leave it for a week two weeks and see do i do i love the feeling that that painting gives me that's the way I want to go. I want to go more unrestrained and have more fun, physically more fun in my painting. I probably put about 40 hours work into art, my art practice each week. I don't clean, I hardly garden and apart from some family time, I am consumed with either visiting, uh, reading, researching or doing my own art. And that's the creative life that at the minute suits me and I, I love. I guess what I wasn't prepared for as an artist um, was all the other stuff that comes with it, all the admin, the website, the Instagram, the Facebook, the learning how to um, market yourself. I really didn't expect that it would be probably about 50% of my time doing all of that. So it's been a massive learning curve. And for any of you who do follow me on Instagram, you may have seen the absolute ass I made of myself going live about, it was March 1st, actually St. David's Day, so I remember it very well. I thought nobody would be around, it's a Wednesday afternoon, let's give it a go, everybody's talking about it. No, no better time than to do it now. So I did, all my life, seven minutes of waffle. I couldn't, I didn't, I wanted to know how to save it and I couldn't save it. 
and uh, then people started arriving and waving and I felt rude to ignore them. I couldn't see, I've just got new glasses. I couldn't see out my old glasses because they were so badly scratched. This lovely lady called Barbara, uh, who I actually was from Pembrokeshire. So I, I brought her on and <laughs> invited her on. We were chatting away. And then I couldn't turn the damn thing off. I was going around in, in a, a perpetual cycle and even got my dog introduced to, to save, um, save me really. So it took three attempts. So uh, I have left the reel on my Instagram. If you dig down to May 1st, uh, March 1st, I should say, but don't watch all seven minutes of it. You really need, to, you know, you work the seven minutes of your life, you'll never get back. But you know what? I think it taught me a really valuable lesson. I had no makeup, I barely did, well, I haven't brushed my hair, I don't think. It doesn't matter. Everybody was so lovely and friendly and I've got more engagement on that one and I think that I've gone on, got on many well thought through posts. So it just goes to show, just do it anyway. What is the worst that's gonna happen? So I this is studio notes and everybody loves to know about everybody else's practice. I thought I'd tell you a little bit about what I do from beginning, from concept, inspiration, right through to, to completion. So my latest series has been about woodlands. Um, the autumn was fabulous, it was lovely and long, and I wanted to um, capture really what those woodlands, what those changing trees, leaves, what the woodlands felt like at that change of, of season, really. So I went out with a friend, which made it really great fun. And she also rescued all my notes, as, uh, all my pictures as they floated down a river when I dropped them on one occasion. I went out about six times, I think, with big A2 sheets of paper and lots of dry materials. You could dry pastels, wax crayon, oil pastels, uh, inks. They got washed away. They weren't uh, as effective, but uh, lots of dry materials so that I could just use them on a big A2 board with um, A2 paper. Taped down the middle um, so that I could crop them when I got home. We went to places that were local, um, no particular reason other than we were going to be surrounded by trees. And we spent a few hours out there capturing it, the whole 360. So not just what I was looking at, but what I was hearing and uh, smelling and feeling, you know, what that place evokes. And it was amazing to see how different my work was from my friend's work, Julie. Uh, so we have all our own interpretation of these places. I also collect found objects when I'm out in places. There weren't so many in the woodlands, but when I go out into the coast, the detritus that's on the seashore, things that you find in the hedges or, you know, all that stuff that just triggers the memory of being in that place. That's really important to me. And they might spark a motif as well when you're, when I'm drawing or painting. Gathering all of those crops together, uh, I've probably had about 80 all together. I then pinned them up on my painting wall and they stayed there for about two months until I'd prepped all my boards. I prepped about 15 boards all together with layers of gesso, pigmented gesso, acrylic, texture or not texture. It didn't really matter at that stage because that was just the ground. And then after Christmas, January, I started with some small studies of the cropped pieces that were on my painting wall, just to see what was the, uh, what was the medium, what medium was gonna work with these. So I opted for oil and cold wax and once I got going, I didn't stop. So I had, I think 19 or 20 new pieces in the Woodland Collection and I worked on them in a series in rotation so they kind of all grew up together didn't didn't spend too long on one piece the core palette shifted quite a bit and I would look at those sketches that are on the wall for marks and textures and colors that um, that I loved and what really happened was that those sketches became the landscape inside my studio I'd supplement them with memories of of going outside but actually um, they evoked those memories so easily I also wrote down names of colors Emily Ball does this on one of her courses um, names uh, naming the colors that remind you of something and it's so much more powerful really than saying something was an orangey pink or um, you know a, a lavender blue actually saying 
that was a old lady fur coat colour or a Rigsby cardigan brown or a rhubarb jelly pink. I just loved that way of working. It, it evoked another uh, series of senses really. So using the sketches, found objects, memories um, invoked by words, phrases, sayings, um, was just a whole 360 experience really. And Woodlands came out of that. So what's next for me is really taking stock post exhibition, which was a fabulous experience for me and carrying on creating, but taking my time to think about the direction that I want to go in next and carry on exploring and gathering. I don't have to create massive pieces of work. I just keep doing the sketching in a little sketchbook wherever I go. There's one in my bag, just that constant gathering and engaging with community seeing my artist friends, going to artist exhibitions, reading art books, catching up with the communities online. Uh, it's a great way of filling my life with creative energy. So thanks, thanks for having me. Thanks for listening and you know where to find me.